Ralston King is Ottawa's first black city councillor, and he doesn't want to be the only one. Now he's on a campaign to encourage more racialized people to run for office. We spoke today about the pressure of representation, but the pride that comes with it too. Here's some of that conversation. King, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. So we're here talking a little bit about your experience and what you're doing to help others kind of get into City Hall, get into municipal politics. I understand in 2019 you were elected as the first black city council member for Ottawa. What did that mean to you at the time? Well, it was very important for the community. I know in April of 2019, there was a lot of elation in the community uh, across the board, not just in the ward, but across the city, because I was the first uh, black elected official in the city's 150 plus year history. And then it, literally the next month, uh, so May 2019, there was great deflation uh, in my community when a family had the N-word spray painted on their garage door with the words, get out. And uh, I think what elections represent is an opportunity to uh, create um, scenarios where people can contribute in meaningful ways. And uh, this was evident to me the following month because while there was deflation in the community, uh, the community made specific asks. They made asks around addressing systemic discrimination and uh, racism, despite the fact that they were looking at this individual act. So I had community members right in the driveway asking, well, you have now been elected. What are we going to do? Can we create an anti-racism office at the city? And I responded to the community and I said, yes, why don't we uh, pursue that? And so it really does demonstrate that representation matters. Just uh, in terms of looking back, that when you were elected, I'm sure that kind of meant one thing. You talk about the significance for the community, then you talk about the challenges so soon after. Mm -hmm. And now that more time has passed, have you reflected on kind of the role you play and your election? Uh, has your perception on those things changed at all? Um, you know what, it really just reinforces the fact that representation does matter, that we have to have uh, more people around the table that fully reflect what the community looks like uh, due to the complexity of issues that uh, our city uh, now beyond one million people is experiencing. And so I think it's important to ensure that uh, there are people around the table who have an understanding of the challenges that different uh, diverse communities have, whether that's the indigenous community, the racialized community, the black community, the Asian community, uh, religious communities, uh, whether it's the Jewish community or the Muslim community. I think it's important that we have people who are able to listen uh, to their concerns and translate that into policy. And so that's what I try to undertake. You know, I, I obviously have been elected to represent the residents of Rita Rockcliffe, and I think our office endeavors to, to to do that well, but the other uh, role that I have at council is as council liaison for anti-racism and ethnocultural relations initiatives. And what we're trying to do there is engage as many people as possible in order to uh, make uh, the city a more equitable place. It sounds like there's a lot of positive momentum. One of the things that is brought up in the study that um, you brought up uh, and mentioned is this sort of burden of representation and it strikes me that even this conversation we're having is sort of putting that burden on you right that you have to speak about these issues on top of all of your other responsibilities is that burden of representation is that something that you felt and is that something that um, what, what does that look like then for yeah. you yeah absolutely i mean um you know, most elected officials will be dealing uh, with the typical issues that affect their ward infrastructure, uh, transit, uh, roads, parks, and all of those things actually are very important to diverse communities. These are universal requirements, but there are also other special requirements that are required by the African or the Caribbean diaspora, as example. Uh, so there's an expectation, obviously, that you show up. And uh, I think that that's a very important part of the job. So I show up, whether I'm in the ward or whether I'm at a uh, picnic or a gala or a different event uh, for a cultural community, it's important 
important to be there, uh, not just to be present, uh, not just to be present, especially for uh, uh, photographs. It's important to be present so that you can listen to people and their concerns, their everyday concerns, uh, because often uh, these communities are marginalized and isolated from City Hall. They're not coming into City Hall all the time. They're not often uh, delegating in front of committees. So it's important for us to go to them, to listen to them, and uh, for their inputs to inform our policy. And so I'm very proud of that. When you're having conversations with people and they're talking uh, about, oh, I, you know, perhaps I am interested in representing my community in this way, but you know, I feel that burden of representation, or I'm worried about people attacking me because of who I am instead of my policies. What's your message to them? How are you going to reach them and encourage them so that you're not the sole representative, you're not yeah. the person with this on their shoulders, so that this city council and city councils across the province can better represent their community? Well, I think the first uh, point is to ensure that you network, 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 that you understand your community and you meet with as many people as possible and you go beyond uh, your cultural community to your wider geographic community. So I also think it's important for you to uh, seek support from your peers and I do that a lot. I mean, we have elected, we have networks of elected officials in the black community, uh, both uh, provincially and nationally, uh, who uh, reach out and uh, talk with one another and share best practices within the next generation, I think that we will see more balance around council tables. I see the interest in politics. I see the understanding of the importance of diversity. Um, I see uh, you know, uh, youth who are interested in uh, really advancing important causes, uh, dealing with existential issues that, that confront us, uh, such as climate change. Um, and you know, I see potential. Uh, so I, I'm really excited because I think I see uh, through the youth the, the fact that they will be able to address uh, all of the challenges that, that confront us. And uh, I don't think that they are as locked into uh, the inherent biases uh, that some of the older generations are. And so that brings me a lot of hope. The other element is I think it's just the natural evolution of things. We are here in the national capital of the most multicultural country on the face of the earth. And at the end of the day, in, in, in my estimation, uh, we have to see uh, the political representation uh, reflect that multicultural reality. Councillor King, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this. We really appreciate it. Thank you.